guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, going to a pretty entertaining email I sent from a subscriber. This one guy sounds like he's in his mid-30s, and he shares his story how ultimately he ends up making out like a bandit in the divorce after his wife royally uh, shot herself in the foot as well as uh, ended their marriage by her cheating. You're going to see he achieves this by some very, very careful planning early on before he met her with his assets, eventual prenup, and then absolutely counting on her absolute stupidity when it comes to money to renegotiate the terms of the divorce, and this guy's made out like a king. So we are going to go over here, guys, to show you if you're going to get married one day, why you would knowing what you know, but okay, you got to do some serious planning with your assets, how things are going to go, the whole prenup, and, and consult a lawyer, do all these things. And also, before you even think about getting married, really ask yourself, do I really need to marry this girl? Because you're going to see the story, this woman baby traps him. But it didn't mean he had to marry her, but the guy foolishly did anyway, and you're going to see what happens. Also, when it comes to the SCX, always wear protection. Always bring your protection, always dispose of your protection, and don't ever buy the nonsense that the gal's on the pill. Otherwise, this could bring you a whole lot of misery in your life, depending on who that, if it is your kid with that girl and a whole lot of money and all that with the wrong person and all that. So there's a lot of lessons here in this amusing story here. It says, Hello SSM. I see all these younger guys whining about how they get railroaded by these women that they get with, and it has occurred to me that these guys need to get with the times and learn to take the bull by the horns. Well, amen to that, brother. In the spirit of that, I want to share the story of my long-term relationship, how it started, ended, and how I laid the groundwork to win that eventual divorce as a high school graduate six years before even dating my wife, Stephanie. I am changing some of the names for privacy. There are details here I don't want my kids to know about. No problem. Guys, as you said in your stories, always change the names. Change the names, locations, stuff like that, you know, and of course I won't reveal your personal information. I grew up watching the women of my parents' generation divorce the men that they were with left and right. They spoke quite freely in front of me as a child, and they gave me the most important lesson I've ever learned in life. That lesson is that women nowadays are planning to win that divorce for just as long as they're dreaming about a wedding. Whenever they would talk about divorce, I would listen to the advice that they would give each other. Well, knowing that, on that basis, and hearing these conversations and the plotting and the scheming and all that, then why in the hell would you get married? Really? It's like someone who listens to these stories all the time, and it still goes off and gets married. Now, I understand if it's culture, religion, fine, or you really want to have kids, but just to do it, after hearing all this information... After listening to the divorce stories and researching my state's divorce laws, I learned how important it is to build yourself up before a relationship and plan ahead carefully. I also learned the nuances of bringing a premarital asset like a home into the marriage and how that can be taken in a divorce in my state, even as a premarital asset. I will later use this to my advantage. Uh, fast forward to the year I graduated in 2008. I was a typical high school nerd. I was a beefy guy at 5'10 and 250 with bad acne. 5'10", 250. Man, you're a big dude. And obviously that wasn't all muscle. I'm 5'10", and I weigh 180 now. So I had no illusions about how women saw me, and frankly, I knew that until the acne let up, there was little point in even trying to date women. Now, an interesting detail that will matter later, my first encounter with a woman who would eventually become my wife, the mother of my kids, and ex-wife, was a shit show. The <laughs> why'd you date her? But at that point, you're probably willing to take any pussy that you can get. I was riding the bus my freshman year, sitting in the very back with my feet up. I was zoned out, staring out the window at the seat just across and slightly uh, kitty corner to me when she sat down right in my line of sight. This creeped her out and pissed her off, understandably to some degree. But the shit storm it unleashed for the next four years was brutal. She was good looking and fairly popular, which meant she was a bitch. Her favorite thing to do was to get her boyfriends to jump to jump me. Truthfully, I kind of enjoyed the fights. <clears throat> Though after I got a reputation for fighting back, they would all get their friends involved. Pussies. That's how bull bullies work. They're all cowards. You can fight back and they get more people involved. But multiple dudes against one? I'm glad you fought back, bro. Anyway, back to graduation. I had a game plan for building myself up. 
I grew up in a blue collar family and most of the guys around me were tradesmen. I knew how to swing a hammer and I realized early on how valuable that can be. The recession just hit and not many people were hiring, especially green 18 year olds. So I gamed the system. I signed up for community college, I signed up for financial aid and took out student loans. Come September, I had three grand in my bank account on top of a grand I, sc I scrounged up that summer. I used that money to buy an 89, um, an 89 truck with a utility bed for 1500 and a nice set of tools. A solid worm drive saw, a decent compressor, a Hitachi framing nailer, drills, a solid mechanics tool set, and a 10 gauge 100 foot extension cord, ladders, and so on. I drove over to the uh, part of a town where expensive custom homes were going up and pulled into uh, job sites one by one, looking for framing and siding jobs in particular. I walked up and asked if the boss was on site. I would then make my pitch. I offered one day of work for free, and if they would hire me, I would work for minimum wage for three months that they would have to pay me what I was worth. Man, talk about taking initiative. But you grew up with blue collar tradesmen all around you, you learn things and uh, you learn to speak the language of guys just like that. You were comfortable around them. Good for you. Most young guys that age or gals would never do that. The third pitch landed me a job after the boss walked up to my truck and saw my tools. I busted my ass that day. They were just starting to sheathe the building and the boss man had two guys hanging 7 16th OSB on the other side. He asked if I knew what I was doing, and I told him yes, and he watched me work for a few minutes and kept an eye on me the whole time. I hung two sides of the building by myself and did a better job than the two guys on the other side. By the end of the day, I was hired at 14 an hour. Great. So this is around maybe 2009, 14 bucks an hour in 2009, and you know it depends where you live in, in terms of where that would go, but back 15 years ago, at 18, 19 years old, Hey, great. I was living out of my truck for a few months as I didn't want to spend my money on rent and my goal was to build a house from the ground up and own it outright. Six months later, and a good amount of overtime, I had 15 grand in the bank. And I might add, this is after the housing collapse, so there's a lot of deals out there. <clears throat> I paid off the student loans and bought an interesting piece of land five minutes out of town. I bought three acres of nicely treated land with a, streaming, with a stream running through it. Uh, the most interesting thing about this land was that it was sold in two parcels, with one that was landlocked from the road. The landlocked parcel was very small compared to the other parcel, about a quarter of an acre. The landlocked parcel had a tiny shack on it and a small dock. The shack was trash and I tore it down. The first thing I built was a two-car garage with a decent wood shop and a two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment above it. Well and, well and septic were existing on the, par on the larger parcel and were located close to the smaller one. I built a shop right next to that property line between the two parcels. Holy crap, you were handy. Did you get any help from your, friend, your family, the other guys that had some uh, experience as well? I'm, I'm guessing some helped you. You can't be great at everything unless, <laughs> well, maybe you are. I don't know. <clears throat> this is amazing, man. Now this detail is important. There was no easement for access to the landlocked parcel, and because the dock counted as a way to access the property, I was allowed to build a house there without issue. I was even allowed to use the well and septic on the larger parcel. So, four years after I was first hired, I was making about $20 an hour, owned a shop with a nice apartment above it, and was about to start building what would become my marital home on that landlocked parcel. The home came in at 3,000 square feet, attached to car garage, four bedrooms, and three bathrooms. Wow, it's like my house. I w it was uh, built with a new construction loan with $80,000 down. And when it was done, I refinanced the loan for the value of the house, which clocked at $280,000, $150,000 more than I took out for the loan. So this is when the, <clears throat> the housing market stabilized and things were starting to go up because you had so many very low interest rates in the 2010s. Not like... 2020, fucking nothing, but still was a lot lower in the 2010s. <clears throat> uh, by the time I ran to my wife for the first time in six years, I had 250 grand in the 401k, was making good money, had a fit body, nice car, and a net worth of just half a million dollars at 24 years old. Holy crap. Now I'm wondering, you said you started off, you're making 14, and then bumped up to 20, $20, $20 an hour, and then you were 
putting all the money into the home and all that. And it had been six years, but 250 in the 401, unless you had other money in that that came from someplace else before this started, or obviously the market had major turnaround back then. That seems like a lot in a short period of time, but okay, you know, I'm, I'm not supposed to be the, I don't know, forensic accountant of your, of, of your story here, but just, okay, that, that's great. <clears throat> not to mention a 4.5% interest rate on the mortgage. The icing on the cake is that I had a large parcel of land and that, if left completely untouched, would have always be a premarital asset that would never become commingled, as well as the 401k that would also never become commingled. The smaller parcel, under these circumstances, is almost impossible to sell without the larger parcel to any person that would want to drive up to the home. The number of people willing to boat in would be a very small part of the market. So let me set the stage. At 24 years old of age and a total virgin, I started hitting the town. At a bar, I run into some fairly attractive women. Jesse and, and well, Jesse and well, shit, I forget her name. They look me up on Facebook and see my property, my car, and see how I'm dressed. They take a very strong interest in me. No shit. 24 years old, you got your own place, you're doing well for yourself, all that. They later invite me to a Halloween party. It gets, it gets out at this party that I'm still a virgin. Well, why'd you open your mouth? Unless some of these drunk girls are like, okay, I'll take his virginity. At this party, there is a glory hole. <laughs> Only one of the women from the bar makes it to the party. Jessie, but she brought her roommate as well. Apparently, she talked me up a bit to the room, to the roommate. The roommate looked me up and down and with an interest. On my Facebook page, there was almost nothing from high school, so she never realized who I was, and with the costumes, I didn't recognize her as well. So I'm talked into using this glory hole and losing my virginity that night. Oh, for God's sakes. Why don't you, you had money, why don't you just get a fucking hooker and get it over with, you know? Get a high price hooker, assuming that everything's okay. You know, get it, get it over and done with. I took a few beers, but eventually I go for it. I'm not planning on knocking anybody up that night. So I put, I, so I put a condom on. Anyways, Jesse and her roommate took turns on the other side. Oh, these are classy girls. I'm not going to lie. I watched some POR and early in the day, which allowed me to go a little longer. So Jesse gets a phone call halfway through and has to leave. Her roommate is still there, going to town. Around this time, I'm told a few years later by her friend of hers, Kate, who was watching, that the roommate bit a hole in the condom before ramming my you-know-what into her hoo-ha. This is fucked up. I never knew the condom had broken as she pulled it off at the very end and tossed it. The roommate, who I had unknowingly just cream-pied, chats me up a bit after, after that. At this point, I'm getting tired and losing my interest, so I excuse myself and head home. Yeah, I'd be running out of there. Jesse calls the next day and asks if I want to hang out. Riding a wave of confidence, I ask her to dinner instead. We date for a few weeks before I lose interest, though she visits my home a few times. Smack! Why the hell were you dating her? Or, because both of them were involved in this process of the glory hole. There's no glory in dating her. I mean, guess what? You ain't the first one she's done this to. But he was a virgin. And obviously not a lot of experience with women. And, you know, I'm guessing you're still overweight at that point. So you're taking what you can get. But still, that's not dating material, let alone other things. I spent the next few months casually dating. Okay, you're getting some practice. Then out of nowhere, seven months after the Halloween party, a very pregnant woman shows up at my doorstep. She introduces herself as Stephanie, Jesse's roommate from the Halloween party. At this point, my brain starts doing the math and my brain isn't liking the answer. Imagine that. Okay, lady, paternity test. So let's go back in time at the, before the Halloween party. He met them at the bar. They were looking him up on Facebook. So, oh, he's 24. He's got his own home. Oh, that's a nice home. He's got a nice car. Obviously, does well for himself. Oh, perfect person to, you know, get me pregnant and milk him for all he's worth. I ask her if she wants to come inside, and she accepts the invitation. She then tells me that she knew the condom broke that night, but since she was on birth control, she thought that nothing would happen. Her friend Kate would later tell me that Stephanie had never been on birth control, so she set up to baby trap me. That's what they do. And you you were so ahead of your years for so many things, but when it came to women and the bullshit they pull, you were a spring chicken. Anyway, back to that. Stephanie then very clearly tells me that I am the only person who could be the father. Yeah, sure. 
The only one. At this point, my brain goes blank. A minute or so later, I come out of it and notice that she had moved in a quite a bit closer to me. She is straddling me in the chair I'm sitting on, coming on quite strong, and asks me if I'm ready to be a daddy. I feel like, bitch, get off me. I stutter for a moment and then ask her what her name was again, and she then introduces herself with her full name. I then said that her name sounds familiar. A couple minutes later, she hops off and goes back to her chair as we both finally recognize each other. She's staring at me, slack-jawed at this point. <laughs> well, her mouth is certainly used to being open. And as I, sh I smack my forehead and say something along the lines of, how could I be so unlucky to knock you up of all people? She doesn't take the comment well and gets up and starts slapping me. I stand up in your house. I stand up straight up without thinking and she gets startled and falls backwards. I notice quickly and drop to the floor and caught her. So this is the girl from the bus. When he's a freshman in high school, he's in the bus and she didn't like him and got her boyfriends or friends to beat him up and give him a hard time. This is her. I got no problem you having that girl who gave you a hard time back in high school without being aware of this, sucking your you-know-what. But now, supposedly, she is knocked up with your child. Paternity test. This calmed us both down. I don't remember any, everything we talked about, <clears throat> but the conversation basically ended with me saying that after a DNA test, that I would do the right thing and take her out on a proper date. I know, smack, and I'm sure there have been a few by now. Yeah, smack. Okay, he do a DNA test and say it is your kid. Okay, fine, your responsibility, that is indeed your kid, but I mean you're going to fucking date her or be in a relationship with her for many reasons, aside from the fact that she was the asshole that gave you a hard time in high school was mean to you and got her boyfriends and then give you a hard time, beat you up and all that, although you fought back and that's good. Why? This is what happens when guys are in a desperate state when it comes to women. Anyway, we get married in 2016 and have a second kid. Smack! Why the hell did you... If this was your kid, why would you marry her? Why? That That is insane. She's a piece of garbage on so many fronts. Miss Glory Hole and the stuff in high school... You married her? You could provide for that kid if it was your kid and not have to marry her. And you had a second kid with her? I mean, I'm glad you have children. I'm going the children you love them, but still. I had a prenup drawn up. If you didn't know everything I knew, it looked like a sweetheart of a deal. I retained all my premarital assets with the exception of the marital home, specified as premarital assets where my car, the large parcel of land, and my 401k... She would get 70% of the new 401k, 100% of the equity in the house, 70% of the joint bank account. The only downside for her was that the, the cap on the spousal support of one year and joint custody was mandated. In 2018, we go to our 10-year reunion. So you get married, knowing all that you know, you said as you grew up listening to all the women that were friends with your parents, talking about the plotting and the scheming to make out like bandits in the divorces, you'd think with that knowledge, you want to get married, let alone to this. But he was very young, and this was a long time ago, and guys have to learn the hard way. At the reunion, we run into her old boyfriend of hers. A couple months later, she starts an affair with her with the ex. Shocker. Really? This girl's a cheater? Who would have thought? I catch them a few months later in my bedroom. I'd seen him pull up on the ring camera, so I had a few minutes to get in the right headspace. She didn't care if she got caught. She thought she had a golden parachute as we were paying off the mortgage as rapidly as possible. So she was going to get with the dead, deadbeat ex that she couldn't uh, get over now, and she thought she had a pretty big payday coming. Yeah, of course she did. I stare in calm, and this unnerved both of them. I made it a point to stare at her for a solid minute as she lay there trying to cover herself. I told the boyfriend to put some damn pants on and come downstairs so we can talk about how he was going to be the new guy in her life going forward. They couldn't see me do this from the bed, but I kicked Stephanie's clothes under the bed. The boyfriend gets gets his pants on quickly and followed me downstairs. Stephanie couldn't find her clothes, so she was a couple minutes behind us. We sat down in the living room, and he was going on about how he used to beat my ass with his buddies in high school. I stood up and walked him over to the front door. I then shot back at him, and there was no way I could ever satisfy. I, I, I shot back at him that there was no way I could ever satisfy Stephanie like he could. With her micro penis fetish, he was the only one who could ever do that for her. <laughs> now, before I continue on, obviously this guy wasn't in love with this woman. Obviously he got with her because she got pregnant. He probably thought that's what he was supposed to do. Maybe that's 
how things were where he lives. Who the hell knows? But still, it doesn't sound very heartbroken to me, according to the story that he caught her cheating. It didn't sound like he was that surprised to catch her cheating. And again, why the fuck did he marry her? This pissed him off, just like I hoped it would. I ran outside and stood in front of the doorbell camera. I put on a little show and let him take the first punch. He then threatened to off me, and I ran a few feet out of shot of the camera. He then followed me, and that was all she wrote. I thoroughly rearranged his face and broke his arm, as well as a couple of his ribs. Stephanie was caught on camera running out of the house after the fighting. So, on camera, they got him attacking you at your house, threatening to off you. How nice. And he got her running out. He went to jail, and there was nothing she could do about it. The cops looked at the video, and all they could tell is that she didn't see anything. After Loverboy was wheeled off, she said, We are getting divorced, and of course I agreed. Or better yet, you should never have married her in the first place. Fast forward to 2020, the house is almost paid off and was valued at $400,000. The joint account has $50,000 in it, and the second 401k has about $10,000. So this is her 401k. She walks away with the house, $35,000 in cash, and seven grand in the 401k. Do you know how fast that money's going to go? So you had your deal about the 401k. I remember you saying that like she would get 70% of the other 401k, her 401k, so she got seven grand. Whoopee. And 35 grand in cash, and she has your house right now. So this was 2020, and the market is about to, housing prices, but housing is about to go through the roof because of the low interest rates. Three years later, 2023, the house is worth $550,000. Aha. But the spousal support is gone. The cash is gone. The kids prefer my apartment above the shop and, and end up spending most of the time with me anyways. So remember, he built the house and he has the, the apartment up top on this property and he has a shop. So he's there living above her. He's there in the apartment on the property and she's in the house. I'm sure she loved that. Money is tight for her than she would like and she can't sell the house as no one will buy it once the title company reports the lack of easement to the access to the property. On top of all this, her love life is dead and no one wants the drama of having an ex-husband living 50 feet away from her front door. So I make her an offer. 200 grand for the house, only if she gives me primary custody of the children. She gets every other weekend, no child support. She told me to fuck off. <laughs> then five minutes later, she called back and agreed. The custody arrangement was updated, then I bought the house from her. She is now happily whoring around town with her new condo, and I couldn't be happier as I have my kids, my home, most of my money, and the regular company of her hot friends in my bed. The end. <laughs> well, yes, I'm glad that you plan things out well in advance, getting that knowledge from the women from that your parents associated with. And I'm glad that you, she signed the prenup and you worked it out away. And the way you have the house, where you have the house, and obviously you got the house and you got the apartment up there that you lived in, and did the whole thing where it would make it difficult to sell because of all these different things. Good for you. That's great. And it worked out well. And she couldn't sell the house because obviously the various different things. So you made a low balder. Got the place. No more child. No more cuss. No more alimony. All that. And you get full custody of the kids. And she was willing to get rid of those kids and let you have them so she could have two hundred grand, which guarantee is she's gonna piss away. So good for you for that. And I'm glad you came out on top of that and you got the kids because she's a piece of garbage. But bro, again, I can't stop saying this. Why the fuck did you marry her? I get that you were a young guy and inexperienced, and you were a horny virgin, and glory hole thing at that party, which is disgusting. But, fine, but okay, fine, it's your business. But then you dated her, and then you married her. I mean, she was pregnant, but you could have easily... If that was your kid, and obviously it was, because you did the DNA test, or paternity test. Fine, you could have provided for that child, because if that's your kid, of course you should do that. Then you have to marry her. But she had to learn. I don't know. So, good job, but lots of lessons in the story of what to do and what not to do. But anyhow, I'm glad you made it made out okay, and you have your two children that you love, and you're doing well. And that, that's what we can all hope for <laughs> for you guys out there. So I guess you're not much younger. Than, you're probably a few years younger than me. So good job, bro. I'm glad you're doing well. All right, you, know, you graduated high school in 28, 20, 2008, so you're probably born about 1990. So my bad. You're about 12 years younger. So you're probably about 36 years old now. Well, bro, I wish you the best. No more glory, glory holes for you. And uh, be extremely careful going forward. But don't ever get married. 
There's no reason to. You got children. You got your house. Nothing. Don't need anything else to fuck up your life. And uh, just go from there. So good lessons in the story, and, I'm, and I appreciate you writing it. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. Give him some smacks. He needs to know it for, for marrying this piece of garbage, but also shout out for getting his shit together. This was an interesting one. And guys, if you got a great story you'd like to share, email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to it, and I definitely will down the road. And this also covers an occasional good news article you might find related to the stuff I talk about. Crazier stories I can do on the other channels, longer stories, shorter stories. The more you send me, it makes it easier for me to uh, do my thing and, uh, you know, get the word out there. And, of course, provide you guys with quality entertainment as often as I can. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.